And each day, thanks to the tireless dedication of men and women who wear the badge, citizens from coast to coast receive just that. But when community members feel that they are not receiving that kind of policing, when they feel ignored, let down, or mistreated by public safety officials, there are profound consequences for the well-being of their communities. There are profound consequences for the rule of law and for the countless law enforcement officers who strive to fulfill their duties with professionalism and integrity. Today, I'm here to announce that the Department of Justice has opened an investigation into whether the Chicago Police Department has engaged in a pattern or practice of violations of the Constitution or federal law. Specifically, we will examine a number of issues related to the Chicago Police Department's use of force, including its use of deadly force, racial, ethnic, and other disparities in its use of force, and its accountability mechanisms, such as its disciplinary actions and its handling of allegations of misconduct. This investigation has been requested by a number of state and local officials and community leaders, but has been opened only after a preliminary review and careful consideration of how the Justice Department can best use our tools and our resources to meet Chicago's needs. In the coming months, this investigation will be conducted by experienced career attorneys from the Civil Rights Division with the assistance of the United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois. They will conduct a thorough, impartial and independent review of the allegations, and the team will meet with a broad cross-section of community members, city officials, and law enforcement command staff and officers to both explain our process and to hear from anyone who wishes to share information relevant to this investigation. We will examine with our experts policies, practices, and data. And at the end of our investigation, we will issue a report of our findings. And if we discover unconstitutional patterns or practices, the Department of Justice will announce them publicly. We will seek a court enforceable agreement with the Chicago Police Department and work with the city to implement appropriate reforms. Our goal in this investigation, as in all of our pattern or practice investigations, is not to focus on individuals, but to improve systems, to ensure that officers are being provided with the tools that they need, including training, policy guidance and equipment to be more effective, to partner with civilians, and to strengthen public safety. And we understand that the same systems that fail community members also fail conscientious officers by creating mistrust between law enforcement and the citizens that we are sworn to serve and protect. This mistrust from members of the community makes it more difficult to gain help with investigations, to encourage the victims and the witnesses of crime to speak up, and to fulfill the most basic responsibilities of public safety officials. And when suspicion and hostility is allowed to fester, it can erupt into unrest. Building trust between law enforcement officers and the communities that we serve is one of my highest priorities as Attorney General. The Department of Justice intends to do everything that we can to foster those bonds and to create safer and fairer communities across the country. And regardless of the ultimate findings of this investigation, we will seek to work with local officials, with residents, and law enforcement officers alike to ensure that the people of Chicago have the world-class police department that they deserve. Thank you so much, and at this time, I'm happy to take a few questions. Should the investigation expand to include the Cook County State's Attorney since so few officers have actually been charged in shootings? Our investigation is focused on use of force and the accountability within the police department. We'll be looking at how force, including deadly force, is handled, investigated, and how officers are held accountable for that. So that's our focus right now. Madam Attorney General, could you please tell us, I've been sleeping in Chicago sometimes, and uh, maybe if uh, U.S. Attorney Farden wants to join in, we're very interested in Chicago and knowing the status of the joint state federal investigation. It's taken quite a while and would like to know the reaction to the Lequin McDonald uh, video document uh, released by the city, uh, if you're aware of them and the potential of some people are wondering if you're also going to be looking into a cover-up. So I have two questions there if you could take them, I'd appreciate it. Okay. 
Um, with respect to um, the investigation into the death of Mr. Laquan McDonald, um, as has been as has been announced uh, earlier, that investigation is ongoing. It is being conducted by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois. And as with and as with all of our investigations into whether or not there's been a civil rights violation, particularly when there's been a death resulting from police interaction, those investigations are thorough. They are independent. They are impartial. We review the relevant federal statutes, which are, of course, a, a different set of statutes from what the state's attorney has at their disposal, and we are thorough and efficient in ours. We don't predict the timing of any of those investigations, so I'm not able to give you that particular answer. Okay. And what about the uh, documents that uh, came out that talk about how the police account of what happened is different from what the video showed? And what I can tell you is that all of the information will be factored into the federal investigation. We don't comment on the evidence while that investigation is ongoing for obvious reasons, but all of that information is factored into that, and I'm not able to give you any more comments on that at this time. Thanks. A, a question. I'm sorry. Ashley, I, I was curious. Obviously, Chicago is one of the largest police departments in the country. How does the size affect um, the ability to find pervasive sweeping civil rights abuses? Because I imagine when you look into a department with that many officers, you're going to find some bad apples, but you're also going to find plenty of, um, you know, upstanding good police officers. It's obviously 10 times bigger or however much time it's bigger than Ferguson. So I'm, I'm just curious, you know, how much that complicates your efforts. You know, I think it's important to note that when we do a pattern or practice investigation, particularly when we focus on the systems involving use of force, deadly force, and accountability, what we are looking at to see is how does the Chicago Police Department track and treat those types of actions. So a lot of the review that we do is of the systems of the Chicago Police Department. And of course, that will entail a review of how they've handled specific matters. But what we are looking at is to see whether or not the police department, as a system systemic matter has engaged in constitutional violations of policing. This involves a review, as you note, of a host of evidence. Uh, but in, because this case will be worked in conjunction with the Civil Rights Division and the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Northern District of Illinois, we feel confident that we'll be able to cover that. And this gentleman had a question. Evidence in this case found its way to the Corporation Council in the city of Chicago. Will City Hall, will officials at City Hall be part of this review? And secondly, a question to Mr. Farden, will you be considering obstruction of justice charges against any police officer who may have been on the scene that night? With respect to your first question, then I'll turn to Mr. Farden um, for the scope of his investigation. With respect to your first question, um, what we will be looking at again is the Chicago Police Department's method and manner of dealing with use of force, particularly deadly force, and whether or not we find racial, ethnic, and other disparities in how they handle those force allegations. It will encompass a number of things, including how officers are disciplined and the disciplinary systems. We will be working with city officials, but the matters that you're talking about seem to re relate to a different issue. What I will say is that we will take information from all interested parties. We are particularly interested in hearing from community groups and community members. We are particularly interested in hearing from the rank and file police department. And obviously, we do have contact with City Hall as we do this investigation. But our investigation is independent. Uh, it, is, it is not tied to either the findings or the actions of other entities. And with respect to your second question, I believe you had a question about um, the specific McDonald investigation. Consider obstruction of justice charges, possibly, against other officers in the Chicago Police Department. So at this point in time, we're not predicting what charges, if any, will be brought. He can't speak. Um, I'll let him speak, but I will tell you that as a general matter, when we have an open investigation, we do not discuss what specific charges may be brought until the resolution of that investigation. What she said. <laughs> um, I, I will. I, thank you, Attorney sure. General. I, I will only add that I do think it's important, as the Attorney General was explaining, to uh, understand that the pattern and practice investigation that is being launched today, which is very important and positive, I think, for the city of Chicago, is, is I do understand. I'm a, if for the people that live in the greater Chicagoland region are concerned about that, given recent reports that there are differing versions of what happened out there, and they don't seem to, to jive, if you will, with 
what we see on the video. I completely understand your question. I, I do think it's important to recognize that today's pattern and practice investigation and the launch of this investigation is related to but separable from what you're asking about, which is the Laquan McDonald incident. And we do not comment on pending investigations other than to reiterate what the Attorney General has already said, which is we do what we do independently. We do it with vigor. We look at all relevant aspects and options as we pursue a case, and it is not unique to this case. The U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago has a great history of doing that and proving that it is both independent and appropriately aggressive when it comes to ferreting out criminal conduct. But I'm not going to comment on specifics as to this particular investigation. Evan, two, three, and five. Evan, and then two, three, and four. Uh, well, this is a question for, for both of you, if you will. Um, part of the criticism of this case has been how long uh, it's taken for any measure of justice to be taken as a result of what happened uh, in that incident. Uh, my understanding is that the video, the, the the big piece of evidence, the video was turned over to federal authorities nine days after it happened. Uh, can you confirm that and can you tell us you know, what's taken this long? Investigation? investigation? I'm not going to speak to timelines, specifically what evidence we received and when we received it during the course of the investigation. What I will say is that we have pursued all of the facts and circumstances relevant to Mr. McDonald's death on October 20, 2014, um, with vigor, with earnestness, with passion, uh, as we approach any important uh, investigative matter in, in Chicago. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask whether the investigation would also include the extensive allegations of unlawful detention at the Home Square facility. And, and if not, why is this not seen as part of the pattern of misconduct <coughs> investigation? At this point in time, the investigation is focusing on use of force and the systems within the Chicago Police Department. That's not the, the issues that you raise are extremely important. They're not at this time within the purview of our investigation. But as we have notified the city, as with every pattern of practice investigation, that we always reserve the right to expand it should more information come to light and require a review of constitutional issues there as well. But at this point in time, it is a use of force investigation. Young lady in front of you. Um, I have an off-topic question. Uh, yesterday, the president talked about uh, urging Muslim leaders to step up their efforts to stop radicalization in their communities. Can you talk about, is the Justice Department increasing its effort in this area in terms of outreach, or are you changing any other policies or resource um, allocations in light of the attacks? Well, with respect to the engagement of the Muslim community in dealing with the issue of homegrown violent extremism and the susceptibility, particularly of young people, to these messages from abroad uh, that encourage them down the path of radicalization, I think the President was appropriately noting that this is a problem for all Americans and every community has a stake in dealing with this issue. And that where people may be closest to a situation, they have a responsibility as well to try and intervene. We are always reviewing our efforts at countering extremism, not just the Department of Justice, but the Department of Homeland Security. Every United States Attorney's Office is involved in outreach to Arab and Muslim communities, and we're always looking to improve not only our relationship with those communities, but how those communities are, can be empowered to deal with this issue as well. One of the things that I always talk about when I meet with parents of a variety of communities is to ask them if they know what their children are doing online. And as many of you will doubtless agree, it is very difficult to get a handle on that. And so there's a number of areas in which we think that the Muslim American community can be very effective and proactive in helping resolve this, these issues. Actually, Sarah is for so. Thank you. I'd like to ask you and perhaps Benita Gupta, uh, Gupta about another civil rights investigation. You talked about building trust between communities. Can you tell us what the status is of the Eric Garner investigation? And are you close to closing that with no charges? Well, what I can tell you is that that investigation is also still active and ongoing. It is open, so I'm not able to comment on the specifics of that. And when we come to resolution, we will announce the resolution there. Um, so I'm not able to give you a comment on that, on that case specifically, except to say that it is being conducted by the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York, an office with which I have some passing familiarity. Uh, and that investigation also is independent, it is impartial, it is thorough, uh, and it is reviewing all the relevant issues in that case. 
Just yesterday, on the eve of your news conference this morning, the head of the Illinois Police Review Authority resigned. Um, obviously, the accountability mechanisms in the state are part of your review process. Can you talk a little bit about how important it is to have a functioning discipline system for police who do fall off the path? Well, I don't have any comment on the personnel actions that may have been taken with regard to any board at this time. What I can say is that whenever we have an investigation, particularly into use of force and accountability, that the issues of how a police department not only tracks but resolves and disciplines for those uses of force is a key element of that. It's one of the many, many things that we'll be looking at and reviewing. But also, I don't want to make it seem as if we're limited simply to looking at Chicago's systems, because of course we need to hear from community members, from residents who have experienced situations where they may feel that, that the use of force was not dealt with appropriately. And so we compare those to how it's handled internally. The investigation covers a host of issues. I don't want to make it seem as if we're looking only at Chicago systems, because it's very, very important that we hear also from community members. It's also important that we hear from rank and file police officers about their perceptions of their training, uh, their perceptions of how use of force is, is, uh, is handled from their perspective as well. A question, please, for uh, Benita Gupta. Uh, based on your experience, uh, your uh, now long experience with these kinds of investigations, what would you expect a timeline to be a week uh, in Chicago? Are we talking uh, months or years? Speak to that. Sure. Um, so as you know, probably that we are unable to give any specific timeline. All we are able to say is that uh, the department will be conducting this review in a very thorough manner uh, and, uh, and will not leave any stone unturned. And we look forward to working with everyone who has a stake in the Chicago Police Department. Madam Attorney General, as a sort of follow-up to that, with a department that's as big as Eric was saying, how far back does a review like this look? You know, is it three years, ten years? How, how do you determine whether a police department as big as Chicago has a pattern or practice of discriminatory? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say at this point how far back we'll go simply because we, are, we are, have yet to begin. But we look at, for example, civilian complaints. We look at trends in civilian complaints. We look at trends in accountability and trends in discipline. And so we may start with one perspective, and it could, it could very easily expand into a longer time frame. So at this point, I'm not going to cabin the time period of the review uh, of the procedures and things that have been occurred. Thank you.